Hello and welcome to Spoken Like a Native podcast. My name is Diane. I'm an English teacher from Scotland and a devoted language learner. And this podcast is for those learning English to improve their listening and vocabulary with episodes on engaging topics like culture, current events, history and how languages work. If you want to improve your speaking and listening, head over to speakmeters.com where you can take part in small group conversations hosted by native speakers. This is an amazing way to boost your fluency, expand your vocabulary and increase your confidence by practicing with qualified, certified and selected native speakers who really enjoy helping people. There are sessions at a range of levels for English, French, Spanish and German. So book your first session today, speakmeters.com. And don't forget, you can take part in this podcast by telling me your ideas for topics. Information about how to get in touch with us is in the description. Enough beating around the bush, let's get this episode underway. Hi, and welcome to episode number four. Today I'm going to answer a couple of questions at the beginning from other members of Speak Meters, from people who are learning English. And then we're going to talk about some, I'm going to introduce you to some phrases that you can use to make yourself sound more fluent when you're speaking. So these are phrases for when you're thinking about what to say, for example, or when you're trying to give some kind of context to what you're going to say. So they're basically like structural phrases or, or adverbs quite often. So let's get it underway. So the first question that i had from a member of the speak meters community in which there are a lot of people who for whom french is their native language the question was how do people abroad perceive the french accent so i can't really tell you how people in america or any other country really see the french accent because I haven't <laughs> haven't had those kind of conversations with with those with people from those countries about that. I'm not sure why I would really. But how do British people see French accents? Well, uh, the French accent is something that has been represented in the British TV in British films for a long time. It's been part of our environment to be able to understand the French accent. So in a way, that can be a really useful thing in the fact that because we've had such a long history of connection between Britain and France, if you speak with a strong French accent, it's likely that people will be able to understand what you're saying, even if your accent is quite strong and you're not really pronouncing in a very neutral or a British or an American way at all a lot of people will be quite familiar with how how you speak. But I wouldn't see this as an excuse for not trying to speak clearly because there are some things in particular which make it quite difficult to understand, to follow what you're saying. Remember that if there is an H at the beginning of a word, except for an example like honor, H-O-N-O-U-R, that's an example, or honest, H O N E S T, the rest of words which begin with H, you you have to pronounce the H. <sighs> Hospital, hotel, holy, happy. Remember to pronounce it. Um, another thing is remember to say the S. She work. It should be she works. She normally works at the weekend. Make sure that you try and pronounce the S. Like a simple thing, but it really makes a difference. That's It's not so much accent as really emphasizing letters, which are important for the meaning that you're conveying and for grammatical accuracy. So in many cases, English grammar is not too complicated, but those small things, those small details really make a difference. There's other sounds which um, can be kind of, can interfere a lot with communication. So I've noticed that a lot of people learning English who speak French have trouble with the word, a word like clothes. 
uh, they say closes um, it's the the sound so just try and practice making those sounds making like it in the middle of clothes because there you have uh, two consonants together you have the the and the z together that can make it a little bit challenging to say so details like that which make it clear that the person is a native French speaker is not a native English speaker and has this strong French accent although we're accustomed to the sound of the French accent it still can be difficult to tune into the accent and to to work out what every word is if they're not all pronounced in the way that you expect them to be pronounced that can also come across in some of the the vowel sounds um, like the e's how they sound for for example um, so but, but what about the image i think maybe the person who asked this question may have been thinking about the image or the perception of the french overseas well there is a sense i think that um, most people learning english as a foreign language do have a, a strong accent when when they're from uh, like french does influence quite heavily um, how people speak English, or I imagine other languages too. Um, so there, there is that kind of, oh, they're French, therefore they have a French accent. It's It can be surprising if someone doesn't have a French accent. So, um, And I think possibly it might have something to do with the, the way that you learn to speak in French. It involves not really opening your mouth very much. I had someone, a colleague of mine uh, many years ago, who told me that she, she's actually French and she told me one of the reasons for, for this for people not necessarily picking up a very neutral or kind of clear accent speaking English is that there is a sort of it's not very cool or it's not very um, comfortable to open your mouth and to accentuate and to make the kind of sounds that you need to make if I would look at myself in the mirror as I'm speaking now I'm making all sorts of faces as I'm speaking if we could compare that to some sometimes when pe you watch people speaking French they don't actually open their mouth very much it's possible to speak French clearly without making a lot of uh, gestures with your face in the episode I had about accents the the last one when we had some samples of different accents the the posh acts the poshest accent that I I showed you the one of Diana Mosley you can do that accent um, without uh, one of the, the features of it is that the face, the mouth does not move very much. So if I was to start speaking in this posh accent, I wouldn't actually have to move my mouth so much as if I was going to speak in my normal accent. Um, it, it conveys that sense of being calm, being relaxed, being self-assured, which I think is something which is encouraged in the French accent. I mean, and then further than that, uh, we would be getting into the territory of stereotypes and perceptions of other people about a whole group of people, like uh, about what's the stereotype about French people. I'm sure there's lots of the time when you encounter a French person uh, as an English speaker and you have the assumption that they, they like to talk about philosophy, they like going to the cinema, they read books, um, they have discussions about the meaning of life. That's, I mean, that they're all pretty good kind of stereotypes. It has, I think there's also a kind of a connotation of being sophisticated, a kind of sexiness. Some people find that, you know, quite attractive. The the French accent can sound quite attractive. I'm not sure if I really agree 100% in English, but definitely listening to French, I think it's, a, it's quite a beautiful sounding language. But... Uh, any language can be beautiful if it's if it's pronounced properly. If people if people are being themselves and they're expression expressing themselves, so I hope that gives you some idea and is of interest to you if French is your first language. Remember, if you have your own questions about what would make things better for you, any doubts, any ideas, um, anything you would like to pick my brains about as someone who has studied. English, the English language for a long time, as a native speaker and a, a teacher, don't hesitate to get in touch. The contact information will be in the description. So I remember going back to the beginning of my teaching 
English journey, if we call it that. One thing that stood out a lot, one of the things I remember most from the beginning was that thing that people, there were students who spoke when they were really concentrating and they knew what they were going to say. They spoke quite well. They spoke clearly. They didn't make very many mistakes. But as soon as they had to think and reflect in the moment and continue speaking, so if it wasn't something that they had off by heart, that they knew very well all the words, then their native language would start popping out. So the phrases that they would use to buy time to go, uh, well, um, instead of saying, for example, in English, well, um, actually, their native language would come out. What's quite funny is, that, of course, I'm, I'm showing you that in English, we tend to go, um, um, is what our kind of uh, waiting noise our thinking noise. In other languages, it's different. Um, I think that's really funny, actually. Everyone has their, <laughs> their own sound to give yourself a bit of time to think about what you're going to say next. So let's get on to that, actually. So as you can see, what I'm doing, what I'm saying by reflex is that I say, so this is used if you're going to tell a story, if you're going to explain something that perhaps the other person doesn't know. But another similar word would be well. So your friend says to you, so what did you get up to last weekend? Well, at five o'clock we did this, then after that we did this, and then, can you believe it? This also happened. So well is another way to introduce the topic. So and well. But what about at the beginning? Right, if we go back, right back to the beginning of the conversation. So what do people say? What do I hear students saying often? Hello, how are you? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever. Okay, that's good, but you could make it sound a little bit more natural. Instead of saying hello all the time, you could say hi, you could say hiya. Obviously, if you know the person well, you can say hi. If you don't know them well, you would just say <laughs> hello, good afternoon. But good afternoon, good evening, it's, it's formal. It's what you would say if you were in front of a big group of people or you're meeting someone in a formal situation. Other than that, just say hello. Say, How are you? Or if it's someone that you know fairly well, hi, how's it going? How's it going? How is everything? Are you all right? What people will say a lot is, are you right? You're right? And then how do we respond to that? I hear a lot of people whose English is not their native language saying, I'm very well, or I'm very fine, or I'm quite fine. So, okay, very well is correct. You can say that. But don't ever say I'm quite fine because it sounds like you're from another century com completely. If you say, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. So say I'm fine, you can say that. That means that I'm good. But you say it in, with quite a positive intonation. If you say fine with a more flat intonation, it means more average, not so good. But actually, it, it, at least in the British context, saying I'm doing great, I'm very well, I'm amazing, it's, n it's kind of... It's, you can do it, but it's more common for people to say, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm all right. Or the classic, not bad, not bad, can't complain. So not bad is key. It's a key expression, of, in, at least in terms of the British context, to say everything is good. And what other ways are there to say, how are you? Um, it's nice to have a variety, not to always have to say the same thing. You know, like in Spanish, you can say, ¿Cómo estás? Or you can say, ¿Qué tal? O ¿Qué tal andas? ¿Qué marcha andas? You have, oh, ¿Cómo va todo? You can have several ways to say the same thing. So in English, how are you? Are you all right? How's it hanging? How's it going? 
So how's it hanging? It's a little bit informal, so don't say that in a business situation, but how's it going? It's fine. And a lot of it in terms of your formal or informal um, communication is not so much about exactly always the words, but the intonation. So being a kind of giving a friendly intonation that will that will help and using those kind of phrases will be with useful. And as well as fine, you can also say not bad, all right, or pretty good, pretty good. If anyone's seen Curb Your Enthusiasm, you could say pretty, pretty good. I hope uh, someone gets that reference. Okay, so you start telling a story and you say, so, and of course you can say, well, when you need to explain something. Where, where were you last week? I thought you were going to be here. Well, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you about that. Of course, you say so, but of course, you can also say actually, well, actually, or in fact. And also, actually, in fact, are used when you're kind of clarifying something that someone says. I thought you were on, still on holiday. Oh, in fact, we came back yesterday. Oh, I thought you still had that job with blah, blah, blah. Oh, actually, um, I stopped working there last week. And when you need to tell the person something surprising, you can say, do you know what? Do you know what? You're updating the person on something which is quite unexpected or completely contrary to what they might think or what you thought was going to happen. Do you know what? It's used be before a story where you're, you're bringing the person in to your personal experience. It might be some kind of uh, really funny story that happened or you found out something really interesting. It's very good for sharing gossip. So if you have, you found out something, oh, do you know what I heard about blah, blah, blah? Did you know? Did you know about blah, blah, blah? Have you heard? That's another one, a good one for gossip is, have you heard? And then another one for explaining something which might be new or updating. It just so happens that. It just so happens that. Oh, hey, Diane, I thought you were working until 6 p.m. Oh, it just so happens that I finished 10 minutes early. And I think the best place to practice with these kinds of phrases, they're not always used so much if you have something that's directly made for teaching students of English. I mean, I'm sure there's some stuff on YouTube or some podcast you can find. But I think in general, it's probably better to focus on if you find some a series in English that you like that's when you'll get the much more natural conversation. So put on the series, put on the subtitles in English, in the same language, and then pause when you find a phrase, this kind of phrase that helps to clarify the conversation. These words are called discourse markers, so they help to mark what's going on in the conversation. And... Um, as you go through, look them up if you don't understand and repeat the conversation. And so in in TV series or in films, you will see these kind of phrases used much more naturally. OK, so then we move on to you're having a conversation with your friend or your colleague or I don't know, some family member, someone you know vaguely, whoever. And then you get onto a conversation or a discussion, maybe you're sharing your feelings about something or t sharing, I don't know, you saw something on the news or on social media and you're talking about it and you have an opinion. So, um, to agree when you're having a discussion about something, what can you say? A good point here is to say that I hear a lot of people learning English um, translating literally from their first language into English and saying, I am totally agree or I am agree with you. Wrong, completely wrong. Well, not completely wrong. You say, I agree. It's a verb where it's the first person, I agree. Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but it's a little bit formal to say, I agree. Unless you're in a debating um, discussion type conversation, a situation like that. It's more, it's more casual to say, 
sure or yeah i know i know yeah i know or um it's so quite common in in america is to say 100 percent or absolutely um there's a podcast i listen to a lot where when they're agreeing with each other there's one guy who's always saying absolutely absolutely um but we, we do say it in the uk but not as much what else can we say we can say exactly yes exactly so this is this is very strong agreement if you're kind of just agreeing or you're not completely you're just saying the person has a good point or you're acknowledging their point of view or their experience sure yeah sure i know yeah i understand that so it's again something is in the the tone of voice there's a difference between saying exactly and exactly or sure and sure so there's a communication that's happening in the intonation as well so when we want to add to the discussion that's a good point or if you want to add something on top you can say yeah actually i realized that blah 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 or also though also very useful you can just say also at the beginning of a sentence to add a, an extra point so if you disagree one way you can say is of course you can say i disagree but you can also say um actually i don't think that's the case for example or in my view or as as i see it as i see it um so as i see it can be used to to kind of uh, just just to give your own opinion doesn't really matter whether you're agreeing or disagreeing in every context but yeah it's used for saying for if you might have a slight agreement a disagreement but you want to communicate it in a polite way so my view is that uh, as i see it that or you know is it <laughs> when someone when you get into a very heated argument you may start saying no you're wrong but that's uh, not really the best thing to do with uh, english speaking people if you're really disagreeing i just say i disagree but another way you can say it is um i mean i mean it's a very uh it's quite a modern uh, phrasing to use so do you think that uh, jaws is the best film ever made um i mean i'm not so sure about that i mean actually i'm not so sure do you think the titanic is the best film ever i mean it's not the best film i've ever seen another phrase which is good when you're kind of in a slight disagreement with someone would be say oh but but what about the blah de blah um it's even called nowadays uh in sort of online debating terms it's called what aboutism is where you kind of have a you sort of change the area of discussion onto something else by saying but what about the way that this affects such and such i don't know i don't want to get into any particular topic here but yeah but uh yeah i'm sure but what about so that but what about is you know you're kind of bringing up a different topic or slightly disagreeing with someone when you have a, a slightly alternative point of view than they do so another really useful phrase um instead of always saying so well actually like so like um i could be criticized from very old school english teachers they would probably never teach this but i think it's very useful because almost everybody says like well it's like it, it you know like um sh- kind of like sort of like we even had a teacher who used to say this like repeatedly used to say kind of like sort of like so it's become more more common i would say in the last maybe 10 20 years before that it was considered to be something like fashionable with the the youth and was um mainly a feature of american speech now i think um well i don't know i don't want to speak for 
other anglophone cultures but in the uk it's very common to say like so i was there like it's it gives you speaking it gives you um some some thinking time when you're you're trying to work out you you don't want to be too exact or you don't know the exact details so so i was like um waiting and then and it was kind of like 5 p.m i guess and i was like a bit late but she was also like a little bit angry so yeah like is used a lot and you can also use like for your reported speech your ex you're relaying a conversation that you had with someone so so i was like how are you doing and she was like leave me alone so when you you talk about to to introduce the speech of yourself and another person from the past in a reported way i was like and they were like and then he was like so that's a way to talk about what people say anyway anyway is a really useful word to change the topic and i think i'm going to just give you a couple of ending phrases and then we will call it a day for this episode so what do you say at the end of a conversation well it's a common signal when you're getting towards the end of a conversation if you hear someone saying this uh, towards the end of this conversation, you hear someone saying, yeah, anyway, uh, or, uh, well, it's, um, ooh, uh, is that the time? Is that the time? Oh, it's, did you know, oh, it's, it's, it's almost six o'clock. And you hear them saying that, and that's them giving you this signal that they need to go. They would like to finish the conversation. My dog is here at the moment, um, so I need to finish recording. Alfie, do you want to say something? Want to say something? He wants to eat the microphone. Looking at me funny. Like, Mom, what the, what the hell are you doing, mother? I'm hungry. Yeah, that's him clawing at the microphone. Okay, with an impatient dog, I'm going to give you take care. At the end of your conversation, you say take care. Um, see you soon. Okay, thanks for listening. If you have any ideas for topics you'd like us to cover, I think next week we will have an episode uh, with an interview with another native English speaker. So that should be uh, a good example of different types of cultures who speak English. If you have any questions or any problems you want me to try and get a handle on about your English learning, don't hesitate to get in touch. Hopefully I'll see you on Speak Meter sometime soon. See you later. Take care. Thanks for listening. What do you think about today's topic? Remember, you can get in touch by leaving a comment or by joining the Speak Meters community. Follow Speak Meters on Instagram and subscribe to Spoken Like a Native on your favorite podcast platform. You can also leave a comment and like the stream. Please, please, please leave a review. It really helps us to find new listeners who are looking for fun language learning content. And lastly, don't forget to head over to speakmeters.com to take part in live conversations hosted by friendly native speakers. That's all for today. Catch you next time. Bye.